Hey everybody, it's Mike from Games Played Badly. Uh, what you see before me is an absolute failure on my part. <laughs> um, I had started uh, a very large miniature and I had, uh, it's a Reaper miniature, it's gorgeous. Um, it's very large and um, I had some preconceived ideas when I was going to paint it. And one of the major things that I did was I primed it. And Reaper Bones miniatures don't need to be primed. Uh, I've done it before and it hasn't really caused too much of a problem. But in this particular case, the primer never really set. So as I was painting, the paint wasn't setting properly, wasn't drying properly. So this is a big old vat of A's Awesome. And I'll put a link to that in the description because you may want to get a, a uh, vat of it for yourself. So I'm stripping this miniature all the way back down to bare plastic and taking a much needed break from a three week disaster that this was. And this has nothing to do with Reaper, it is all about me and inexperience with some of the things that I had to do. So I'm going back to my wheelhouse, which uh, is a little bit smaller and uh, is a little bit more familiar to me. And this is a miniature from um, a game called Massive Darkness. Now, I've done several of these in the past. There are lots of photos up online about the ones that I've already done. There are so many miniatures with that game that I have infinite possibilities when it comes to painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this and this will be our next project and we'll go from there. Okay, so what I've done is I've already kind of pre-selected some of the paints that we're gonna be using and I, find, I found a nice little triad for the fur because there's a lot of fur on him. And so I think I'm gonna be using, this is my base coat, this is the shadow, this is the highlight. And then I'm also going to be using this for any type of hands or feet, toes type thing. So I think that'll work out really well. And I have some polished silver here that I'm going to use for some metal bits. And he has some armor on him that we're going to take a look at as well. And then this is going to be his tunic. So it'll be a nice contrast. Should be a lot of fun to paint. Uh, we'll go over the miniature like I normally do. We have, uh, it looks like he has some armor right here along his jawline. If not, that's not some sort of weird bone thing. I don't know. He has some pretty well-defined teeth up here. He has a toga here. Looks like a metal ring of some sort holding the toga together. The toga goes here, 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 and around the back. He has some armor on his forearms. He has a weapon, some claws on his hands, another piece of armor over here, and some decorative bits in the center. But there is a lot of fur. And I did a zenithal highlight on him, and that actually really helped bring out those details, which is the reason why a lot of us do it. Um, if you're using more of a transparent medium when painting, these highlights really do show up uh, very well, and they help, again, with your edge highlighting. Keeps things a little bit brighter. But uh, there are all sorts of little bits on him that are going to be fun to paint. Those are, the devil's always in the details, and that's where things really kind of shine. So I am going to go ahead and jump right in and start doing some base coats just to get those out of the way. And I'm looking forward to not having uh, paint not stick. <laughs> All right. I hope everyone's doing well. I know it's going to be the dog days of winter here soon for a lot of us. And uh, with us being all cooped up, it's going to get a little bit more uh, difficult. So I'm here with you. A lot of us here are creating content are here with you. Um, by all means, reach out if you need somebody to talk to or you just want to shoot the, shoot the breeze. All right, so uh, I am using uh, Reaper's Knoll Pelt. This is a new paint that I just got as part of a set of uh, various skin tones. So let's go ahead and lay this down. I'm using some new brushes. Uh, they are sable brushes as opposed to synthetic bristle brushes. I always have problems with saying bristles. And um, let's 
go, go ahead and start getting the obvious areas where there is fur. I'm trying to make a lot of short videos um, so that way people aren't sitting and watching me paint for three hours at a time. And by doing so, I cut out a lot of the stuff that I, the dialogue and everything that I put into the video. These new brushes make a bit of a difference. They hold a lot more paint than the synthetics in my book. And they tend to hold up a little bit better as far as shape. I've really liked these Come On Minis. Um, to paint, the, the quality is really, really good. And I think I kickstarted, of course I went kind of crazy because there were all miniatures in there. I spent a little bit too much money. It was like 278 bucks or something like that. And um, basically got them all. And uh, I am overwhelmed with the amount of painting I have to do. Paint selection can be challenging and whether or not to make your own washes and make your blend your own colors together or use colors straight out of the bottle. All those are things that as an artist, which miniature painters are, they have to determine on their own. I'm tending to lean a little bit more on some of the pre-made washes because they're really easy. And then for some of the custom washes, I'll build my own. But the fundamentals are the same as far as highlights and shade and color blending. So I'm gonna go through and start my uh, second coat of the base. Because it is pretty fine detail in here, I want to be ginger with my application of paint. I don't want to kill those uh, details. I don't look at reference materials uh, for miniatures that I'm painting. I come up with my own style and color scheme, and uh, sometimes that serves me well, sometimes it doesn't. I just prefer not to be influenced by anybody else's interpretation. I'm using a color called Goblin Skin on this. And let's see what this looks like in comparison. I like to name my miniatures as I'm painting them. You know, we had Pirate Jeff and we had Biff and I've had a couple others. I don't know if anyone's old enough to remember. I shouldn't be old enough to remember this, really. There used to be a show on called Grizzly Adams. And he befriended a black bear. I think it was a black bear. Was it a brown bear? Uh, and named him Ben. So I'm going to name this guy Ben. So it's a color called uh, Bright Turquoise. Okay, so one of the other major things we need to tackle is his armor. I'm going to try a new color that I haven't used before called uh, Skeleton Key. Let's see what this looks like. One of the things you don't see off camera is that I have a very small fan set up out of frame that in between takes I put the miniature in front of to help the drying process. I'm going to go ahead and make his jaw plate bronze. I don't recommend using a fan if you're using washes because washes are delicate and then the fan will just blow them everywhere, um, probably where you don't want them to. Let gravity do its thing, let washes sit and dry. They take a little bit longer because they are thinner, but the results are striking. 
trying to use a side brush technique on these. I kind of I didn't use it on the other side and it kind of screwed things up. As long as I have the white out, and just barely try and touch his teeth here. I'm going to start on this little armor piece here. I could do a wash right here, which might be easier, but that's going to get real messy. So I'd prefer to try and do it by hand if I can. I'm just filling in all the uh, recessed areas. Now I've seen some people, what they'll do is after they kind of get their base coat done, they'll go ahead and set it with um, a varnish and then they'll paint over the varnish and it makes things a little bit easier to clean up if you make a mistake. And it's also um, the uh, washes as you use them will flow a little bit better into those recessed areas. Okay, so I've been farting around a little bit, um, cleaning things up. I went through and did a um, a wash on his hand, just to see how that would look. I'm using Army Army Painters, uh, I think it's light tone. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna attempt to apply a uh, a strong tone to the Army Painter strong tone to the ropes and see if I can get some more detail out of them. Again, the nice thing about washes is you can move them around. You have some flexibility with them. You can stop them up and move them around. All right, I'm gonna use dark tone on his shoulder pad, as well as a couple other areas. Okay, so I have taken some time to go through some of these other little elements. Um, done some of the, the hair that he has here, the wraps. There's cleanup that needs to be done there. Um, I've also taken the ropes that I thought that he was that he had on his hand, and I've made those copper. I think that's going to look good against uh, not only his skin but against the blades and some of the stuff that I've already done. Um, I'm going to leave this rope the same color here up on top, and. Um, I still have his little pendant here. I did the outside in uh, bronze. I'm gonna do the inside in a um, color I've not used before called Fireball Orange. And then what I'm gonna do is, um, this actually has a relief to it. So I'm gonna try and uh, pin wash, a darker wash in so that way that 
raised area is really, really pronounced. There's a belt buckle here that I just want to get a little bit of uh, metallic on. These uh, black circlets here that are holding up his cloak, I'm just going to go ahead and dust those with a little metallic. That way it looks like they are metallic but they've been tarnished. Also lend some interest. Same thing here. Give it a little shine, give it a little glint, little glitz. Okay, so I have some dark uh, dark wash, dark tone wash out that I was using to redo the skull down here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to armor bits. I always like to put a wash over metallics. Brings down the shine a little bit. I don't know many people who go into battle with brand new armor, so it's more than likely that we're gonna have some tarnish on there. His shoulder pad here uh, is very interesting. There's a lot of detail in there that I think a wash is really going to bring out. I'm going to lay it on a little thick here because I want everything to pop. Uh, I'm going to also go through and try and do his teeth. Because his teeth are molded and I want to make sure that they come out but I need to be real gentle with this otherwise it looks like he's got a black mouth. <laughs> now you remember that emblem I was mentioning. I'm going to drop some dark wash in there. It'll do uh, a lot of the work for us. Okay, so I've done what I can with most of the uh, base coats. I even did a little bit of uh, washing on the metal. That looks really good. Did some washing on the hands. I'm probably going to go through and do that again. But now it's time to really tackle the fur. Right now, he looks good. I think it looks pretty good. But he looks flat. There's nothing to him. So now it's time to do the parts that I enjoy, which is the uh, shading and the highlights. So if you remember early on in the video, I mentioned this was my triad for the fur. Obviously this one is our base coat. This is gonna be our shadow. And this is gonna be our highlight. So I'm gonna go through and start mixing these together to get something that hopefully works. And then I'm gonna make that into a bit of a wash so that way we can just kind of get that on there. Okay, so it looked pretty good. I went ahead and um, washed most of it uh, already. Washes are messy. There's gonna be some cleanup afterwards. Uh, there is an order of operations that people follow when they do this. I always um, do it the wrong way. <laughs> so there's going to be some cleanup, but with washers, again, cleanups are relatively easy as long as you get to them quickly. I'm just going through and mopping up areas where I think we probably shouldn't have any wash. I am going to go through and actually do a second shade. And I'm gonna use this troll hide, which is what I kind of mixed together with this as my deeper 
shadow. And I'm going to take this, I'm just going to drop it in some of the darker areas, like the crook of his knee here. Up under in this area here, between his legs, back behind his knee again, base of his foot, under his armpit here. Just areas that you think aren't going to get a ton of light. I'm going to go back into these creases. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so here's our guy, uh, Ben the Bear. I went through and put a dark or a green tone uh, wash over him just to pronounce the fur a little bit more. Um, I have some areas that muddied up a little bit down near the feet. And um, I'm gonna go through and apply another highlight just to make sure that I get a little bit more contrast. So let's go ahead and do that. As with all the miniatures I paint, lots of changes happen during the creative process. I actually switched up to nail colors and decided that I wanted to go ahead and do some extra shading here, some extra highlights there. Not every decision works out. I'm not sure how that looks. <laughs> I'm debating. I think the shade may have been a little bit too light. I thought I was done, but I just couldn't leave it alone. Thanks again for watching and paint fearlessly.